Hello everyone, good day to all of you. I wanted to do today an accuracy test. This is following up the review of the MDX 510, which I have here now in a much more ridiculous setup purely for this accuracy test. Uh, I was going to actually include this in the review, but as I mentioned in there, uh, this is uh, gonna be rather lengthy, so it wouldn't fit. Um, so I've already tested this at 50 yards, uh, just kind of a preliminary test to kind of gauge what type of ammo does well in here. Uh, and that was with the aim point, which is the actual optic I'm going to be using on here. For this accuracy test, however, I am going to be using a Schmittenbender short dot, one of the older ones, so 1.5 to 8. Doing this all at 100 yards, you can see the target right down there. I'm going to be using a bipod and everything, so very little room for human error. I'm just going to see what the gun itself is actually capable of. Everything has already been zeroed, so we should be all good. I'm going to start with the Round that did the best, somewhat spoiling the results, but the round that did the best at the 50 yards was 69 grain Sierra Tip Mash Kings, which I have a few loaded right here. Going to be doing groups of 10. I also did happen to find a bunch more uh, interesting ammo that I do want to test through here in this test at 100, and we'll just see how those all do. So very first, I am going to cut in the footage from 50 yards, um, just in case any of you are curious how that went. You can use timestamps to skip ahead if you want. Uh, and then when I cut back, of course, we'll start on the actual 100 yard accuracy test here. 50 yards, chronographing, Lake City, M855. Yeah, shooting top left. for 77 grain, Sierra Tip Match King. 10 rounds at the top right. Sixty-nine grain, zero tip match king. Now for 70 grain burger at the center right bullseye. We're getting started now with the 69 grain Sierra Tip Match Kings, and I'm going to be firing this at the top left bullseye down there.
10 Sierra Tip Match Kings. All seemed good on my side as far as what I was doing. I'm gonna switch now, shoot the next group at the top right target. So the next bullet I'm firing is 69 grain Barnes Match Burners, which uh, tend to shoot pretty well in a lot of rifles in my experience. So we'll see how they do in this one. Okay, on to the next. And now for the third one, these are Hornady 68 grain GMXs. I do also want to note that all the rounds so far, including this one, have been hand loads. The next two that I'm going to do are factory. So, last of the hand load groups, right here. Okay, now we're going to switch to some factory loads. So the next one is RWS. These are pretty interesting. These are 55 grain soft point, so they're not a match bullet, so I'm not expecting the best accuracy out of them, but uh, they're kind of like a fancy box and all that, so, you know, they're kind of premium ammo, so they might still do quite well. I've seen that happen in the past. I'm going to fire these at the lower right. I'm not sure. I may have accidentally said lower right last time, but I'm going in an X pattern, so top left, top right, bottom left, and now the bottom right for this one. And then I will switch in another target for the very last hand load, or for the very last factory load group that I'll be doing. But starting now with these RWS right here. Alright, those seem good. I'm gonna go and switch in another target and we'll do the very last group. So I have the target changed down there. Now I'm going to be testing the last of the groups here. This is 62 grain Winchester open tip. We'll see how those did. You can see they did hit pretty high, but they're all still on target, so that's good. And uh, you all already know how the, uh, how the groups shot because I did overlay it on the footage, but I will go get them and I'll kind of review how they did back when I have everything calculated.
I've got everything calculated, so now to talk about the targets and do a bit of a review of everything. And I, I'll go fairly quick, because I did already overlay all the numbers as I was playing out the shooting footage, but still, I'll kind of go over everything in case, uh, in case you skip around and all that. So very first, I did want to even more briefly mention the results at 50 yards here. Uh, a lot of these, as you can see, are quite large groups. I think the reason for that is because even though these were at 50, I was shooting this with a unmagnified optic. Usually when I do accuracy tests, even at 50, I do use a magnifier. I just didn't have that on hand at the time. Uh, so it, it's a little bit larger as a result just because of the imprecision of not being able to see the target perfectly. Uh, and I did also notice that it was a little hard to see these holes uh, in the actual target itself on the, foot, on the footage because uh, I didn't realize how poorly this would show up because it's a black target. So you can see this a little bit better now as well. Well, even now it's actually pretty hard, but just sort of like that. You can kind of see this here. Uh, they grouped pretty well. I am, am zeroed for M855, so as expected, they should be grouping pretty well around the actual bullseye. I am mostly going to be talking about precision, not so much actual accuracy. I know that this is called an accuracy test, but that's just because that's what most people know it as, even though the technical correct term is precision. So that's what's going on with that. Moving on though to the 77 grain Sierra tip match kings. Shot very low. Um, they got a 4.8 MOA. I did want to mention that, uh, you know, as I said already, these are larger than they should be because of the unmagnified optic, but I've always had the 77 grain sear tip match kings, and every rifle I've tested them in have always shot worse than the 69 grain sear tip match kings, which, as you can see here, 3.58 MOA compared to 4.8 MOA up there on the 77s. These kind of strung vertically, which I do think is interesting as well, but uh, good group, no real outliers or anything like that either. Moving now to the 70 grain Burger VLD target. Do have two outliers here, a flyers. Um, I didn't count them as flyers, I counted the whole group, so this is quite large, 3.802 inch extreme spread. Do note, this is of course because of how I calculate it uh, with the calculator I have on hand, I do outer edge to outer edge, so you would subtract 224 here for the bullet diameter. That comes out to a 6.83 MOA. 1.99 mils, uh, pretty, pretty bad. Actually kind of surprising that this shot worse than, you know, M855, because usually M855 and M193 are not terrible, but they're usually pretty lackluster. Usually in my other rifles, I usually see about three and a half to four MOA with those. So not really much to say there. But moving to the stuff that I really wanted to talk about, the more important uh, good test, I would say, everything at 100. I'm going to talk about this in the same order that I shot them in. So, of course, that means I'm going to start with the 69 grain Sierra Tip Match Kings here, which was the one that shot best at 50. But, of course, here, now that I had an actual proper magnification and everything, this ended up with a 2.64 MOA. No real flyers. Very nice. And uh, I did actually zero the short dot with these. The uh, Actual aim point up here is zeroed with the M855s, but for the accuracy test, I did zero with these. They did still go a little bit to the left, but uh, it's okay. Moving to the next one here, Barnes 69 grain match burners. These actually shot surprisingly better than the 69 grain uh, Sierra Tip Match Kings. Still somewhat vertically stringing more than anything else, but uh, this ended up with a 2.39 MOA or 0.694 mil. Uh, mills. So quite nice there. Again, no real flyers there, which I keep mentioning because the Hornady right here did end up with a very odd flyer right here to the right. So I didn't measure that. I just measured the nine shot group, which uh, as a result made the MOA come out to 2.25, 0.654 mils. I am certain that if I were to redo this and actually, you know, not have a flyer that it would probably end up being either exactly the same or slightly larger than the Barnes match burner right here. Uh, furthermore, I did also want to mention, I, I did zero, uh, right down here you see I got three shots here, just when I was confirming the zero with the short dot. So that's not from this group, uh, and you probably already saw that from the footage, but I uh, did just want to mention why those were there. Moving now to the RWS, which I thought was a very interesting round. As I said, I was kind of expecting it to not shoot that well. And it didn't actually shoot terrible, um, but it, it did shoot the largest of all the groups from this session. A 2.86 MOA, or 0.832 mils, and uh, was pretty strung out horizontally here, you can see. Again, not terrible, but uh, certainly the largest 
At least there was no real flyers or anything like that. And then looking last at the 62 grain of Winchester open tip. These were also, you know, everything's kind of hovering around 2.5, 2.7 ish MOA. And uh, this ended up at 2.46 MOA, 0.715 mils. You could maybe say that this one is a flyer. You can see that it's pretty distant from the rest of these, but uh, I didn't think it was so far off to warrant actually counting a separate group. So I did count all 10 of these, hence how I got that number right there. Because I did get this rifle relatively recently, and while it's certainly not a precision rifle, I mean, kind of pointless because it's a 10-3 barrel, uh, you lose most of the power at that point anyway. But I was just curious of what the kind of maximum potential accuracy is, is out of this barrel, out of this rifle. And it's not, uh, it's not, it's, it's really just mediocre. It's not bad. It's not great either. 2.5 MOA averaging around there is, uh, it's fine. Uh, for all the distances I would really be using this at and what I do use it at, uh, it, it's perfect. Uh, I mostly am using this at much closer ranges because again, it loses all the power so quickly anyway with such a short barrel. So I'm actually fine with the 2.5 MOA. But uh, it's good to know. Thank you all for watching, and let me know if you have any other questions on this, how it shot, the accuracy test, any of the other accuracy tests that I did in the past. Or, you know, if you want to comment or ask about anything, feel free to in the comments below, or uh, my email is always open as well. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.